In 1842, the sounds of chisels and workers singing filled the air in Nauvoo as work resumed on the temple. Almost all the men in the city, supported by their wives, spent time on the project. Even children helped, carrying lunches to their fathers in the quarry. At the time, Margaret Cook was single. And in a culture that took marriage for granted, there wasn't always a clear plan for how single women could contribute. Margaret Cook is really one of the unheralded members of Relief Society. Her contribution was central to the establishment of Relief Society. She was described as a maiden lady seamstress. She supported herself through her skills at sewing. And she works for Sarah Kimball, who is rather a well-to-do woman, but her husband is not yet a member of the church. Both Margaret and Sarah had heard the prophet's call for support for the temple workers. And so they're talking together about how can they contribute, how can they help. Miss Cook desired to be helpful, but had no means to furnish. She remarked that she would be pleased to contribute needlework if it could be made available, and I proffered material for her to make up. Sarah Granger Kimball. The two decided to work together and to invite others to become involved in their project. I suggested that others might feel as we did. We then agitated the subject of organizing a sewing society, the object of which should be to aid in the erection of the temple. Sarah Granger Kimball. Sarah Kimball invited several of her neighbors over, and Phoebe Rigdon suggested that they write a constitution for the society. She suggested that Eliza R. Snow be the right person to write this constitution. Eliza excitedly agreed and wrote what she considered a very fine document, but she wanted Joseph's approval. So she took the constitution to Joseph, who read it, and said, this is the best constitution I've ever read. However, the Lord wants something better for you, and he wants to organize you according to the holy order. And Joseph later said that the church was never fully organized until the women were organized. So Joseph then asked them to meet with him on the following Thursday, and that they would organize after the plan of the priesthood. And that really was the beginning of the Relief Society as we know it today. On March 17, 1842, 20 sisters gathered in the upper room of Joseph Smith's red brick store and were officially organized. They chose the name Relief Society to show that their purpose was not only to support the temple and do good works, but to rise to pressing calls for relief and to do extraordinary things. These were clearly women of faith and ability and sacrifice. They had indeed done extraordinary things even before the organization of the Relief Society. But once they were organized under the direction of the priesthood as the Relief Society, they could act as a community together with access to the revelation and guidance of the Spirit to also increase faith, help to save souls, and to change the church and their posterity. When Emma Smith gets up and she said, we expect pressing calls and we expect to do something extraordinary, to me, that's, that's visionary. That's not just for 1842. That's for the 200 years to follow. I think it was Julie Beck who told me once, she said, you know, Sharon, you're the director of LDS Charities, so you're working on large global disasters, terrible typhoons and famines. She said the Relief Society works on personal and family disasters as they happen, and they're just as devastating to that person, but it just doesn't get a lot of press coverage. And in those situations, the Relief Society is kind of the front lines of being able to help. An editorial in the next issue of the church newspaper introduced the new society and expressed optimism about its potential. With the resources they will have at command, they will fly to the relief of the stranger. They will dry up the tear of the orphan and make the widow's heart to rejoice. Times and Seasons, April 1842. There is no shortage of opportunities for the women of the Relief Society to serve in Nauvoo. Not only were there immigrants pouring in from Europe and other parts of the United States who were poor and needed help, but there was a lot of health issues and sickness. I often think about people getting off the steamboats, you know, Joseph Smith would go down to meet them and they're coming into Nauvoo, but they're penniless, they've sacrificed everything to get there, and then they have to start over again. And that isn't any different than things that we see in our own modern time. You know, people are crossing bodies of water to try and get someplace, they've sacrificed everything. I think more than any other people, we have an empathetic heart for these situations where people have to start over and we can help. 
it's really neat to be able to read these minutes of the Navi Relief Society and see how these women helped each other and helped others in their community. One British immigrant, Ellen Briggs Douglas, was a widow who had been sick for 13 weeks when her daughter Anne's neighbor suggested she apply for help from the Relief Society. I refused to do so, but she said I needed something. I agreed, and we went to one of the sisters, and she asked me what I needed most. I told her that while I was sick, my children were out of their clothes because I could not mend them. So she said she would do the best she could for me. Anne came over in a few days, and they brought the wagon and fetched me such a present as I never received before. Ellen Briggs Douglas. As they served together and taught each other, members of the Nauvoo Relief Society recognized that they were acting in the service of their God. We feel truly thankful that through the blessings of our Heavenly Father, we, his handmaidens, are called to be co-laborers with our brethren in building up the kingdom of God upon the earth. Mary Isabella Horn. I hate to say this, but for a while, I didn't want to be associated with Relief Society. And then later on, it was just a class that I went to on Sundays. But when I caught the vision of how it was restored, what Relief Society means, that it's a way for women to be organized, it completely changed my feeling about the organization that I belong to. I feel the buzz of what those women did. I feel Emma Smith and how she said, this is about doing something extraordinary. I feel Emmeline B. Wells, who helped women get the right to vote. Amy Brown Lyman, who started social services for the LDS Church. There's Elaine Jack, who brought in all the global women into one big sisterhood. Linda K. Burton, just a couple years ago, gave us that charge. If there are strangers among us, we need to treat them as if they're our family. When I can connect to that long line of women, I feel like I'm, I'm next and I have to do my part. <laughs>